Grant with Battery Wholesale here. We're in my uh, fish house here. Uh, it's about a 2014 or something like this, I believe it is. Uh, I've done, uh, I briefly talked with you guys before about batteries and kind of the EGMs versus the wet cells and, and that type of thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna talk about the voltage so and how to watch the voltage of your batteries. If you look over here to the left of me, I, I put in a, uh, a voltmeter so I can watch the volts of my battery so I can know where the state of charge is. When you guys see a lot of those battery um, capacity lights that people sell, they're actually just voltmeters is all they are. So they're going to, they're, they're, I don't want to say, they're making it easy for you to read. So it's like a fuel gauge type of thing, full, three quarters, half. So by looking at it, you can see over there, right now we're showing about 13.2. Uh, we just took it off of charge uh, from the house to be able to show you and demonstrate the different amp hours that are pulling out of the batteries. Because uh, I did bring out a an amp meter out here that we can look at. So that'll that'll end up flattening out down to around 12.8 once we start putting some loads on it and the surface charge and that type of stuff will come off. Let's take a look at the battery bank that I, I do have in the house here. I do have a couple group 31s in here, so they're all about 100 amp hours a piece. These are last years um, that I have in here. We're gonna go out and change out to a different battery here, and we'll talk about it in, in the future here in a little bit. There is nothing running in the house right now. Um, uh, just so you guys understand, I have kind of the standard cookie cutter house that Ice Castle sells, the 17 footer with the the V nose. I do have the RV edition, so there is some more things such as the refrigerator um, in the house that some people don't have, some people do. What I'm gonna end up doing is, is we're gonna end up hooking up the, the amp meter uh, up to the, the battery bank through the positive cable, and I'm gonna start to show you what the, the amp draws are off of everything that's, that's running. And then we'll also go out and quick plug it in, and then we'll watch with all the loads that are on and the, the charger that is running, are you gaining voltage or are you losing voltage with everything that's running? Okay, so let's take a look at the amp meter I do have here. So what you do is you just clip it around the positive, term, uh, the positive cable coming out of the battery and it'll tell you kind of what the amps are flowing out of the battery. This is what a lot of garages use if they're looking for, if you have a power drain in your vehicle. So what happens is you'll come in to, let's say an auto mechanic dealer and you're like, oh, my battery's bad. Nope, we test the battery, it's good. Test your alternator, it's good. It basically means you've got some sort of draw on the vehicle. So what they'll end up doing is they'll put this around the positive cable and then start pulling fuses until they can solve a seed and all of a sudden see the, the amps drop down. Let's take, a, let's take and click this onto the positive. If you look right now, um, I am pulling point 0.1 just with just the small stuff that's running. So when we talk about that voltmeter over that's always continuously on, that is point 0.1. My house never came with a battery disconnect in it. Uh, I know all the houses do now, and I really recommend when you're not using it to throw that disconnect on there or, or shut it off type of thing because that point 0.1 of an amp, if it sits around for a long period of time, it's gonna discharge the batteries. And as the batteries discharge and they sit a discharge state, they start to discharge themselves even faster. I really recommend that you flip the battery switch or disconnect the positive cable. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip on just the top lights. So I have the standard top lights that are in here. I ended up changing out the bulbs from the standard incandescence to LEDs. So there's six LED bulbs in this house running right now. If you notice, to jump from 0.1 up to 1.3. So my lights alone for the six bulbs, I'm not including the bathroom yet, are pulling 1.3 amps or 1.2 because the house itself was just pulling the 0.1. Uh, I ended up just hoping to show you the stereo part, but the stereo ends up pulling, it's being a little bucky right now, it pulls about 0.7. The big one that you're going to want to watch is, is going to be your furnace. A fan is a huge pull. If you do any sort of heat element, um, or a fan, it's one of the biggest pulls off of a battery that you can do. If you take a look at the meter there, she all of a sudden jumped up to 7 amps just on the fire up. 
and now it's going to start working its way down back a little bit. The fire up on most most pieces of electronics is always going to be bigger. If you look at the gauge right now, we just with the the lights that we're talking about on the ceiling, the six there, and that furnace running, we're up to 7.2 on the house. I still haven't turned on my ice hole lights yet, uh, or my stereo. You could figure that it's going to be, for those two, it's going to be about another amp, amp and a half, that those are going to end up pulling. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and, just to show as an example, I'll go ahead and flip all those switches on. And I really want to show you guys what a true load in a house does. Okay. We're up to 7.6 amps right now, and I'm not even running my radio. So the radio you can figure is another 0.7. Um, but then I'm also going to, everybody kind of has the LED lights that are on the outside of the house, the flashing and that type of thing. Dana, if you want to take and show them up here. I put them on my bunk up here so I have more lights when I'm sitting at the tables. Uh, I find I like a lot of light. So I ended up buying a little strip light like this and turning on up here to get more light at the table. But a lot of guys will put these on the outside of the house to flash, to show where their friends are at. Um, and that type of thing. If Dana goes and looks down there, we're at 9.8, you know, running all the lights, no stereo, like I said. Uh, that's how many amps we're pulling. I do want to talk, go back to this LED strip. This is an interesting fact I ended up finding out or testing, is when you turn these, so the, this is the remote I have, it has different colors, but if you want the true bright white, um, it pulls the most. So right now we're showing at 9.8 doing true bright white. Let's say if I just turn it to red. If you look down at the gauge down there, just by me pressing that one button, I dropped a half of an amp. I'm down to 8.6 amps versus the bright white being up at uh, 9.8. It's actually more than that. It's, it's almost a couple amps that you're going to change. So right now with everything running besides my stereo, which like I said, mine right before ran about 0.7, is I'm almost at 10 amps running in this house. Okay. So when we start talking amp hours of a battery and you have a 90 amp hour, let's see here, let's pull up the numbers here real quick. So if you have on a group 24 that comes in the house with 60 amp hours, excuse me, in it, typically on average, the, the houses are going to come with a group 24 in there. It's going to have 60 amp hours in it. Okay, so right now I'm pulling right around 10 amps. So you start adding up. So after one hour of being on the ice, I've pulled used 10 of my 10 of my 60. Two hours I've used 20 of my 60, and three hours you know I'm using 30 of my 60. That's a lot of power that these houses are pulling and using as you guys are sitting out there. So people always come to me and say, hey, I can't make it all weekend on my battery. What's going on? Well, if we start to look at amp hours, your fuel tank. Okay, so if you have 60 amp hours and you're pulling 10 every hour, now don't get me wrong, that furnace is going to, once you warm up, is not always going to sit there and pull the 5 amps. But what I want to show you guys is you start running all of this stuff and you start getting the stereo, you put your amplifiers and your speakers in there and you start really pulling the wattage, you're not giving the batteries a fair chance to get back recharged when you're only starting with only 60 amp hours of capacity, okay? If you go up to 31 like I have here, there's 100 amp hours there, all right? So with my two batteries that I have sitting there, I can, I actually have 200 amp hours of capacity. So look at that as your fuel tank. And, you know, every hour as you pull it out, you know, a certain amount of amps, you're only left with so many to use. Before, basically, you got to go to a gas station or you plug it into your generator and start to kick it back in. Okay. So, I'm still trying to pinpoint how many, what amp hour charger that are, that are on here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk outside here quick and I'm going to go ahead and plug in the, the house to... Uh, 
back into the wall. Because right now we're showing we're doing point or 9.7 amp hour. Okay, so I'm going to go plug it in and we're going to go see what it does the reverse way if we're gaining more voltage or not. So give me just a second. So but looking at the gauge here, it's actually pumping in 16.9 or 15.3 amps into the battery right now and it's working its way back down. Okay. So you have to take a look at you know what you're actually putting back into the battery to restore it. Most guys when they leave on the weekends because they're not charging all night, well, they're not letting their generators run all night long, they may be at negative voltage. So when you get home, recommend big time plug it in you know plug it in when you get home I know that charger is going to kick on and want to kick more amps back into those batteries the worst thing you can do is store a battery in a discharge state uh, it'll, it'll kill the battery <laughs> if you have wet cells in there and you're sitting in a discharge state if it's really discharged it will freeze but now if you have a fully charged battery it's acid for the most part and it won't freeze okay so I want to quick talk a little bit more <laughs> on on amp hours of batteries. So your standard 24, your, your least expensive that are out there, uh, it's kind of like Excite's 24 MDP, Interstate's HD 24 MDP, they're all right around 60 and 70 amp hours, okay? That's typically what's coming in the campers uh, when you buy them new. You can go up to a group 27, I believe that fits into that white box that they come in. If you notice in mine here, I took my box out because I am using AGM. Technically, you're supposed to still have them in a box uh, just to kind of help any sort of cast catastrophic overcharging or anything like that. But I ended up not doing that, um, and I ended up just setting them in there. Uh, the box itself underneath the seat there still has the vents to the outside wall, so it is still getting some fresh air, but I, I personally don't have them in there. You can put them in a box. Um, I'm not going to downfall that by any means. The North Star batteries, they have a little vent hose that if you put a, a North Star in there, you just hook a vent hose up, port that out, and that's all you need uh, to cover the gassing if there is any uh, from AGM. So, but if you end up looking at the Group 27s, you're going to be anywhere from 96 to 105, okay? A lot of the guys are liking the Optimas out there, but the Optima Group 27 guys is only 66 amp hour that's in the battery that I had seen. I got this off of Trojan's website. They have a whole listing of all the different manufacturers and the batteries they make. They have the amp hour that's on there. Some of them are approximate, but they get real close. Uh, and then they'll also have the reserve capacity of the batteries too. So uh, I'll post that on the bottom of this page. So if you guys do want to go look at the specs of the different batteries that are out there, you can give us a call too. We'll definitely talk you all the way through them. The other thing is, is to move up, if you want to get more amp hours, is move up in size. So it's basically, you need more cubic inches to get more power, is really how you got to kind of look at the battery side of it. So the Interstate, the SRM 29's got 126 amp hour, the Exide 31DC is 115, the Optima 31DM uh, is 75, and the North Star AGM has got 103. The, the North Star battery's got the highest reserve capacity out of all of them. It's got 220 minutes of reserve capacity, so it will actually last you the longest um, out there. The, the North Stars and the Odysseys of the world, they've got big bus bars. They can recharge super fast, and there's really almost no impedance in it, so they're going to be able to take the current basically in as fast as you can get it. With going to an AGM, we're definitely need to, going to need to outfit you with an AGM charger because the algorithm that charges an EGM is different than a wet cell. So we have to make sure that we've got you, you properly fitted with the proper charger so you can get the lifespan out of the battery that you want. The AGMs, the warranties are tremendously longer. Uh, I recommend most of my customers, if you're gonna spend the money on a North Star, use it in your fish house in the winter, use it in your boat in the summer. So you really get your money's worth out of them. They have a long storage life, 
uh, where you can sit with no charge on them, which is great. Um, so there's a lot of positives. The other positive is if you want to come down here, Dan, I'm going to show them. This is going to come out here. We're going to, we're going to get some more in stock here, but I have a dummy battery up against the wall here. This is, this is about, uh, I think this is right around 200, uh, over 200 amp hour battery. And look how it's tucked away. It's about the same amount of capacity in this battery here as I have in the 231s over here. And look at all the extra cabinet space you can end up gaining. I mean, it's a tremendous amount. You're gonna have one battery to contend with. Um, you can just tuck it off in the corner like that. It's gonna have the valve on the side to uh, pour it out uh, for the acid. And better yet, guys, it's gonna have a smart technology in it where you can tie your phone with Bluetooth straight to the battery and be able to tell its state of charge. You can tell how far they're gonna progress on the technology of the battery. They'll be able to tell you the discharge states, you know, how many times you cycle it. But right now, you'll be able to pull up on it. And you'll be able to go, what's my state of charge in my battery? Boom, I'm ready to go or I'm ready not. So you could be sitting in your house, let's say if your camper's right outside your garage or whatever, you could, once you can find it on Bluetooth, You'll be able to tell, hey, do I have enough voltage in my battery or what's going on? So it can help you monitor your, your battery voltage. But the other nice part about that is, think about all the capacity room that you're going to have in that box that you're going to be able to gain to store stuff, tackle, whatever, fish, if you catch a whole bunch. Um, that type of thing. Most of it should go in the cooler or on the ice. But uh, it's really going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal product. I hope to have some more in anybody that's interested in it you know drop a link here on the facebook page give us a call 1-800-777-2243 visit us on the website bwioutlet.com love to help you out with any of you know the next things that are coming if you have any questions on what we have to offer what we can get you uh, any of that type of thing i'm more than willing to we got chargers we got batteries got great sale on vexlar batteries guys you can see it on Facebook here. Find us on Facebook. They're for sale on there. That price that's on the website is delivered to your door. So I believe the, the 9 amp hour battery, brand new uh, 9 amp hour battery, we just buy such a mass quantity of them that I can deliver it to your door. I think our sale price right now is right around like $21.99 to your door. So find us on Facebook. Like us. Share us. Let us know how we can help. If you have more fish house questions, I know a lot of guys are just rigging up their houses again. I heard uh, Red Lake out there has got six, seven inches. Guys are hammering the walleyes and everything like this. I know the houses aren't ready to go out yet. There's not enough ice up there, but it's not long before the, the wheelhouses will be able to go up by wheelers and, and that type of thing. So let's get you all set up so you can make the nights. I'm more than happy to help you all with any questions to try to make sure we got enough capacity to run you. Uh, give me a shout. I'll talk to you guys later. See you on the water. Thank you. Bye.